Welcome to the latest episode of the series How to Paint Miniatures. Today we'll be painting the Gapping Dragon from the Dark Souls the board game. If you're new on the channel and are interested in painting tutorials, consider subscribing to follow up our content. To start this project, you need the following colors. Once again, I'd like to thank Andra for sending us this expansion to paint and if you missed Nick's review on it, you can check the link that I added on the video. I started this mini by priming it in full black and I'm going to paint the first layer of the wing with Mornfang brown. I'm going to base it with the brown and do the same effect that I did when I painted the gargoyle wings. So if you want to see how I did it for both, keep watching. I use the big brush to cover all the base of the wing. I'm trying not to paint over the dark parts, but it's not a big deal if you make a mistake, we'll cover everything in black afterwards. This is how it will look like with all the wings painted on both sides. For the next step, I'll be using Gogfag Brown to build the first layer of the texture of the wing. I'm using a dry brush and cleaning the excess of the paint to dry brush the center of the wings. You should leave some space close to the darker parts of the mini to create this gradient. I'm going to do the same thing for all the wings front and back. Then, I'm going to do the last layer with Elder Flesh, even more to the center of the wing. Rings and repeat for all the wings and voila! There you have the wings gradient effect. You can do this for any color of wing and dragon, which I think it's a cool effect. Next, we're going to mix Mastel Red with Bugman's Glow to start painting the mouth of the Gapping Dragon. Can we say it's this mouth, it's the opening? the Demogorgon look-alike thingy. So we're going to paint the whole base of what it looks like the mouth opening of the Gapping Dragon. I use Caribou's Crimson to shade the mouth and try to give it a wet look. I achieved the shade which was good but wasn't as good or wet as I wanted to so I would go back at least and dry brush more of the Mastron Red and Bugman's glow over the mouth. Don't forget to paint the exterior of the gun so it looks like the teeth are piercing through the skin. This is how it's going to look like once it's finished. And then, for the next step, I'm going to use Catacomb Flash for the base of the teeth and the nails of the dragon as well. I cut it short because there is no secret here. Once it dried, I used Carbo's Crimson to shade the mouth and try to give it a wet look. It was nice while I was painting, but once it dried, it didn't look as good. So if you have a suggestion on how to make better glossy blood effects, please comment on the video. For the next step, we are going to brush the dragon's teeth with Ushbari Bone. When I say brush their teeth, it's quite literally. We will take a dry brush to brush the paint on the teeth. Clean up the excess paint and brush through the teeth and try not to get too close to the base so the catacomb flesh that is transitioning between the gum and the teeth is still apparent. This is how it's going to look like once it's finished. We'll do the same for the nails of the dragon. As I didn't quite like the lack of depth of the texture of the mouth, I'm going to use Bugman's Glow to dry brush it around the gums and make it transition between them and the leather skin. I also painted a bit on the center of the mouth. Finally, I'm simply going to paint the whole thing in Abaddon Black. 
It would have been okay to keep the black primer, but I prefer the black when painted. It's a bit more glossy. I use the same for the base and I'm going to do that in all four sides. If you like to make better bases for your mini, I put a tutorial on how to make bases for miniatures using the Bloodborne ones as reference, but you can do it with any mini. I just prefer to keep my Dark Souls 1 in full black since that's how I started the series. For the last part, I use Catacomb Flash to dry brush the belly of the beast and give a different tone to the dark part. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any constructive feedback, questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to drop in the comment section below. Let us know if you painted or intended to paint using any of the tutorials. I'm very curious to know if those are helpful for you. Also hit the bell button to get a notification when the next episode is up. See you next time.